If there is one thing that New England is good at growing, it's rocks. And if those rocks are lucky, they just might turn into stones. The difference between a rock and a stone is that a rock is just an unemployed stone. Because a rock has no value as it just lays in the earth. But as soon as a human uh, picks it up and utilizes it for its integrity and builds something with it, it gives it a life, it becomes a stone. It stands to reason New England is fertile ground for stoneworks, and they're all over the map. A tiny peninsula in New Hampshire, experiencing an oceanfront building boom. In Rhode Island, a cluster of stone houses of a kind found only in Rhode Island. And outside of Boston, a stone cold mystery hidden in a sprawling office park, begging to be solved. The most murky, the most lonely house in town with the most questions and the fewest answers. Meanwhile, up in Vermont, the heavy, humble craft of dry stone wall building has taken flight, evolving into realms of art and pure imagination. Tonight, a survey and celebration of New England's true rock stars. This is Chronicle on WCVB Channel 5. Every time you take a rock off of the ground, it's that rock's life goal to get back on the ground. So you use the craft and the rules to build a structure or wall to keep that rock right in its place with all of its friends. The rules and craft of stone wall building are deeply ingrained in Jared Flint. There's a certain responsibility that comes with it because when you're moving the stone, you know that when you put it down, it's going to be there forever. Flynn is, after all, one of the founders of the Stone Trust, a nonprofit that hosts workshops and certification tests for amateur and professional dry stone wall builders. No mortar, no cement. The Stone Trust, headquartered on Scott Farm in Dummerston, Vermont, a historic orchard operated by the Landmark Trust. The grounds of Scott Farm, an open-air laboratory of sorts for experiments in stone. I describe it as passion. It has to be a passion-driven trade because it's so laborious. I mean, who would ever think that they would want to pick up rocks all day, every day? for more than half of their lives. Flynn's passion has lifted him beyond artful stone walls to ever greater heights. The Moon Bridge in Putney, Vermont, the heavy stone held together by nothing more than gravity and friction. The idea born when Flynn rescued some granite blocks from a dismantled railroad bridge. Similar to cooking, like you need to gather your ingredients to make dinner. As for a place setting, Flynn found an orchard hilltop with an open view to a distant Mount Monadnock. More importantly, it came with owners with an open mind. Once I had it drawn on a piece of paper, I, I brought it to the farm and literally in less than a minute, they were like, sounds great. And we were excited to have the opportunity to uh, welcome the project here. Green Mountain Orchards has been farmed by the Darrow family for more than 100 years. Evan tends to the apples and blueberries. Andrea oversees the large farm store, known far and wide for her delicious cider donuts. The Darrows welcomed the Moon Bridge as a way to permanently protect a part of their farm they weren't using. If you hired somebody to build a project like that on your property, I don't know what it would cost, but we felt that it was a huge privilege to have that put there. There's been no publicity for the Moon Bridge, but word of mouth has pilgrims finding their way to this hilltop in southern Vermont every day, drawn by the harmonic convergence of stone and setting, and perhaps those killer donuts.
so pretty. And Jared Flynn says when it comes to finding a place for his creations, the farmers have all the good land and the best attitudes. He's had some experience with public commissions as well, which comes with a lot of bureaucracy. By contrast, he said dealing with the Darrows was a dream. Within minutes, they had a plan, and the next day he was clearing trees. Up next, the mystery and history of a stone cottage.